first off, you know what it is if you heard me. We're about to get into today's content, and we talk about Tiana. Yeah, that's right. Tiana Daniels. You know, we got to give our spice every single time we come up on this thing. I got to come up with a nickname for her, just like we do with everybody else. We got Forrest Gump. We got Mighty Mike, Mighty Mike number two. We got Tattoo Thompson, although I didn't come up with that one. So I got to come up with another one because I want to use another one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call her the, uh, the scalper. All right. She be scalping the, uh, the heads of big names. Now, as long as Thompson is uh, injury free, she's the scalper. So we're going to come up with something for Tiana Daniels. Leave a nickname for her in the comment section below. But look, 24 year old Tiana Daniels, who is the other American that was able to make Doha and uh, the Tokyo Olympics final? I'm going to wait for it for a second. Yeah, we got crickets right here. No other woman in the 100. Okay, I got to preface that in the 100. People were talking about, what about Gabby Tobin? She winded up meddling. Hey, look, she's getting a little bit of coverage already. Tiana Daniels ain't getting coverage. And about this channel, we cover all of the athletes that are head and shoulders above the rest. And if you top 10 in your country, you definitely can be covered. And if you're in the top 50 in general. So with that being said, look, she's an Olympic Games bronze medalist, world championship or Olympic Games silver medalist, world championship bronze medalist, made two uh, finals at both the world championships and Olympics. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? She winded up getting a brand spanking new PR. Congratulations, a 1083. She knocked off almost two tenths of a second off her time. And she's just as fast as Dina Asher Smith is right now. So with that being said, if she get the timing right, she can go ahead and get a medal. And the way that she's progressing and that she's improving every year, let's just start back here right after she was out of the U20s. So she's right here in 2016, 1121. And then she got down to 1106 in 2017. And then in the year of the Doha, that's what we're calling it, because this was the year of the Rio, the year of the Doha, she got 1099. 1099. So, and then she made the uh, finals in Doha. We're going to cover what she did there in a second. Then here in the year of the Tokyo, guess what she did? Now, at the Prefontaine Classic just this weekend, she winded up running a 1083. Can we get that? Uh, can we get that applause for in uh, the comment section below? Because we got to cover all the athletes. We got to cover all the athletes and uh, honor them, right? As far as the big ones, the, look, the biggest thing in track and field is people ain't getting covered. So that's what we gonna do here. So with that being said, look, four by one hundred meter relay at the year of the Tokyo, she winded up getting the, as part of the team. As part of the team, she winded up getting a silver medal. She's a crucial part of the team. Who else could have done it? Here she is. Here's Daniels. Thomas, Oliver, and Prandini. All right. Let's make sure that we keep these people in our uh in the beginning of our mind. Because a lot of athletes, even the own Jamaicans, when I when I brought up a man and he was part of the four by one, they're like, who is this guy? Well, that's because the coverage isn't there. And you know, people aren't going out of their way to look up the athletes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and uh make sure I do that for you guys. So now uh here in the year of the Tokyo, she winded up getting seventh place in the final with an 1102. Now that was right by her PR. So it was a 1099 at the time. So she was able to run near her PR. So if she can get a, a slightly faster time, you know that she's going to run near her PR when, it, when the time is most important. So that's good. Would be better if she can run a PR, but worst case scenario, because they're not going to run their PRs all the time, running near your PR is good too. So at the world championships, as part of the team, she winded up getting a bronze medal. Congratulations to her and the team as well. They got the stick around. They did what they needed to do. They came and brought back a bronze medal. Sure, you could say, hey, the teams could do better. But hey, she's a great athlete, very consistent. Now, back in Doha, she ran an 1119. Now, that was the year she ran a 1099. So that wasn't necessarily her best performance there. She winded up getting seventh as well. So she's consistent as far as placing sometimes placing is the thing that matters in the final sometimes these finals aren't necessarily fast other years they are fast so while people are focusing on the wrong person Forrest Gump right here or Shikardi B as we like to call her let's give her that fail we are going to instead focus on what's important and what's right in front of us Tiana Daniels all right that's what we're going to focus on and don't forget 
that you are watching Head and Shoulders, where we cover athletes, performances, and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let's continue what we're doing this as far as this coverage. So at the World U20 Championships back in 2014, she wound up getting as part of a team. You see a theme here. She's a relay athlete. So she's good enough to make the relays and she's good enough to make the finals. Uh, not quite yet. She hasn't gotten the timing yet to medal at uh, these major championships, but that time too may come. Okay. Now she winded up getting a, a, a gold as part of the four by one. Now at the Pan American U20 championships, the following year, she winded up getting gold as part of the four by one. And she got a bronze as part of that, uh, as part of the Pan American U-20s. And right here at this national championship, she got a uh, a first place, all right? She winded up winning there. So that's her honors right there. Personal best, like we said, a uh, seven, uh, well, here it is right here. It's a, oh, that's too much wind. Oh my goodness, where is her indoor 60 time? Let's look at it, a seven eleven. all right? It's so, it's very interesting that outdoors, even with wind behind them, so I, I I wonder if we're able to get, you know, a 400 meter indoor track, for instance, would times be a little bit faster? Very interesting to uh, think about that and consider that. But anyway, like I said, look at her times, a 7.11 for her uh, 60. If she can improve upon that a little bit and break seven, oh my goodness, her start is going to be unstoppable, essentially. Uh, then we got a 10.83 that she just got. The 200, uh, a, a 22.51. So if she can improve upon that, that will do her pretty well. Maybe she runs some, a couple more 400s or something like that and then move herself down. That seems to be the trend. 400 meter athletes coming in and just dominating. So there you go. So with that being said, I took this time to honor her. I'm going to cover maybe uh, Christian Coleman versus Trayvon Bromel. And I think that will be a good matchup. So when Coleman comes back from his band uh, in very short order, uh, who do y'all think of win? Like, look, the way I'm looking at it right now, I'm going to spoil it for you. Coleman, I think, mops the floor from him. Like we say in peak condition, both of them, uh, Coleman is going to mop the floor. So with that being said, I'll catch you all on the next video. Smash that like button and subscribe.